Linear equations are one of my favorite things in math. You'll learn about it more in your next math level, but we want to give you an introduction to the concept here. If you look at this, you notice that when I had plotted the x and y values on the coordinate plane, it plotted into a straight line, linear. Um, and the only way we can do that is if we have a type of equation that can be set up in a linear equation format. And the way that is set up is called the slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form, okay? Where I have a y equals a number times x plus some other number, okay? Now, if I take this function right here, and I start plugging in x and y values. So I'm going to make a table of values, and I'm going to have my x, and I'm going to have my y. I'm going to start picking random numbers. It's good to pick positive and negative numbers for x. So I'm going to maybe do a negative 1, um, a 0, and a positive 1, just to get myself started. I always want to include 0 as one of my values. So if I plugged in a negative 1 in for x, well, Negative, or 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 2, those cancel out, and I'm left with 0. Then if I plug in a 0 for 2, that makes this go away, and y is just going to equal 2. If I plug in a 1 for x, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 makes 4, so y is going to be 4. And if I go and I plot those points, negative 1 and 0, 0 and 2 and 1 and 4. If you notice, these are all points on the line of my linear function. Now let's look at some information here. We, we get a lot of information just from this equation. Looking at it, I know where my line crosses through my y-axis. This is called the y-intercept, and the y-intercept was right here. My y-axis is here, and it hits at 2. Now, the only way I can land on the y-axis itself is if my x is 0. y is 2. Well, look at that. The number that is by itself in a linear equation is my y-intercept. It's where my line crosses through that y-axis. Then if I look at this point, I notice that I go up 2 and forward 1. I go up 2, forward 1, up 2, forward 1. That is the number in front of my x. This is called my slope. My slope is my rate of change from one point on my coordinate plane to the next when I graph this out. So that's why this is called the slope intercept because this format here gives me my slope. Now if you haven't heard of slope before, slope is called rise over run or the change in y over the change in x. It's a constant rate. The only way I can make a perfectly straight line is if I'm moving by the exact same amount each time I go forward. So slope, again, is the rise over the run. My change in y, change in y over my change in x. So if you get something where the y is by itself and it's equaling the x term plus the non-x term, this is a linear function format. And then if you start at the y-intercept and move rise over run from there, you can graph your line without even needing to create a table of values because I was lazy and I only did three things. But look at all these additional points. I could find more if I just kept the pattern going. All right, so if I had gone up one, or up two, forward one, I could also do the reverse of that, which is down two, back one. Down two, back one, down two, back one. Guess what? It keeps that pattern going, and it lets me find other values that make this equation true. If I'm given a linear function with a bunch of coordinate or ordered pairs, and I need to find out which one of these would fall on the line of this function. What I do is I plug in the x 
and see if when I solve it, it equals the y value that's given. So if I plug in negative 6 for x, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus 3 would be negative 9, not negative 10. So that is not on my line. If I plug in a 4, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 would be 11, not 3, so that is not an option. If I go 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, plus 3, negative 6 plus 3 leaves me with 3, so yes, that is on my line. And then if I plug in a negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus 3 leaves me with negative 9, those are correct. So these are my two coordinates that would fall on the line of this linear equation. Next, it asks me to complete the table of, con uh, <laughs> table of values to find the corresponding y values if I have these as my x values. So 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2 minus 2 is going to be a negative 4. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 2 leaves me a negative 2, and I knew that was going to be the case because this is my y-intercept. So I know that's my y-value when x is 0, and if I plug in a 1 for here, I have 2 minus 2, which is 0. I can then go and plot these points on a graph. So negative 1 and negative 4, back 1, down 4, 1, 2, 3, oh, I'll try to do it in the right spot. Then I have... Um, 0 and negative 2, and then I have 0 and positive 1. If I look at that, I have a line that is starting, and if I looked at the value in front of my x, I have the pattern of up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So this is showing the correct slope based on what my linear function is showing. Now if I have this function, I can graph this just looking here, and this is telling me where I start on my y-axis. I start at 3, and then where do I go from there? If I have a negative 2, remember my slope is a number over the other. Whenever I need to turn a whole number into a fraction where I have it over another number, I just pop it over 1. So negative 2 over 1 would then be my slope. And so from here, what it's saying is I need to go down to 1, 2, and then forward 1. So I have negative for the 2, but a positive for the 1. Down 2, forward 1. Whenever I have a negative on the number in front of my x, I know my linear function is going down. So I can also back this information up by plugging in values in a table of values. So negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be positive 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 0 cancels that out, so the y is just going to equal 3. And if I have x being 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3 leaves me with 1. So if I verify that, I have negative 1 and 5. That would be correct if I have up and back, continuing that line. I have 0 and 3, and I have 1 and 1. So even though I didn't rely on this, I just went with the linear function. I can back it up with this, and this is the linear function of, or this is the line of my linear equation. I don't want to go too far in my explanations of linear equations, but I just want to give you some terminology and an awareness of elements so that it's not something completely foreign or new to you when you keep evolving, uh, progressing in your academic math classes. So uh, just reiterating, slope-intercept form is when we have an equation written in y equals mx plus b format, where m represents the slope of your line, which and the slope is just the change in y over the change in x. How much did I go up and down then, how much should I go forward or back from there? We start with that. And that can be a little confusing. Our brains tend to, because of the ordered pairs, want to put the x value first and then the y value, not in this case with the slope. And then the value that's by itself, we call that the b value. This is our y-intercept. And the only way we can get on the y-axis line is if our x is 0. So our x is always 0 for the y-intercept, and then we are you have whatever that b value shows. So actually, instead of putting a number sign, I put the, the b there, okay? So that's your introduction to linear functions.